Tournament trail continues from Miller City High School here on WOSN. I'm Doug Jenkins with Dart Evergall as we get set for the nightcap of tonight's sectional final action. It's the 20-3 Liberty Benton Eagles taking on the 19-3 Cary Blue Devils. The Blue Devils Conference champions in the Northern 10 with a 13-1 record. Liberty Benton claiming their first BBC outright crown in quite some time with a 9-0 BBC League mark. And again, another battle between teams that have seen each other this season. Liberty Benton took care of business the first time they played Cary, 54-32. But I think Cary's coming in uh, with the... Uh, They've got, uh, they're playing for something other than just moving on in the tournament. They want to make amends for that loss. In the meantime, I think Liberty Benton really trying to reestablish themselves as one of the elites when it comes to Northwest Ohio basketball. Yeah, absolutely, Doug, and you're right. I think Kerry's going to come in here with a little chip on their shoulder. They're going to try to, you know, maneuver their way into the next round of this tournament. You know, this is going to be a, quite a matchup between these two teams. They're very similar when you look at the size-wise and that kind of thing. You know, Liberty Benton, you know, they, they have their work cut out for them. They got, I was watching uh, Kerry during the pregame, you know, shooting three-pointers out there. They've shot 481 three-pointers this season, you know, about 100 more three-pointers than anybody else, I can see. You know, and they hit like seven in a row out there. So, you know, Liberty Benton has to get out there and defend that three-point shot. they got to limit those guys out there. They can't let them have clean looks because if they get clean, Kerry gets clean looks, they're going to knock them down. They're a, six, a 32% or a... 33% three-point shooting team. So, you know, they got to get out there on that. You know, a big thing for Liberty Men, too, is, you know, attack the glass. You know, do the things you got to do. Get the rebounds, those kind of things, you know, in order to stop a carry team that, like we said, you know, they got, they've got a lot to win tonight if they can pull this off and knock this Liberty Benton team off. When you talk about uh, Liberty Benton, they've been playing some aggressive basketball. Although, as we were talking about before this game started, three and three in their last six games after a, a, an incredibly hot start. But one thing that Kerry coach Jamie Young concerned about is matching the aggressiveness of this Liberty Benton team. He doesn't want to sit back and just let the game come to him. And LB will take it to you if you're just going to sit back. It'll be interesting to see how aggressive both teams come out here in the early goings in this game. Oh, and absolutely. <laughs> and, the, and the other thing they got to do is they got to they got to stop that Casey uh, Doolittle, who's the you know the player of the year in the BBC. You know they got to shut him down along with the Conaway boy as well. You know they can't let them get dominate in the paint, and that's where those guys like to do. They like to get inside there. They like to get those clean looks at the basket on the inside. Carey cannot let that happen. They got to force. Liberty Benton to the outside to make him shoot outside. Now, Liberty Benton's not a bad three-point shooting team either. They had 32% of their threes. But, you know, you want to make them shoot from the outside. You can't let them get easy looks on the inside. You know, and you got to take care of the pressure of this Liberty Benton team. They'll, they'll trap on you, you know, pretty well. And, and they'll try to shut you down. We saw that in the first game with Spencerville, you know, and what they did to Columbus Grove. Liberty Benton could do the same thing to you. And so you got to shut that down. You know, you got to compete for everything. It's going to be a scrappy game. I mean, you're going to have guys all over the, f the field. You got to limit your uh, turnovers. You know, you got to dive for them. You got to get the 50 50 balls. You got to do all those things in order to win this game. I think the, the team that's willing to do just that little extra thing probably comes away with Victor in this one here tonight. We'll step aside when we come back. We'll have your starting lineups and first quarter action. It's Carey and Liberty Benton, and it's next on WOSN. Welcome back to Miller City for sectional final boys high school basketball in Division Three. The winner of Liberty Benton and Gary here tonight will take on Spencerville, who dispatched Columbus Grove in the earlier contest at Miller City tonight. Let's meet the starting lineups for both squads, starting first with the team that will be represented as the home team on the scoreboard, the Cary Blue Devils, again coming in at 19-3, and 13-1 in the Northern 10 Athletic Conference. We'll go with this look, number three, Carter Smiley, a 5'9 junior, averaging just over 12 points per game. He's a 40% three-point shooter on the season. Number four, Alex Putnam, a 6'3 junior. He averages just over nine a game, shoots 30% from three-point line, or lead. Number 13, Bryce Young, a 5'11 senior, averaging five points per game, a 32% three-point shooter on the season. Sensing a theme here with the uh, Cary Blue Devils. Number 14, Austin Niedercore, a 6'1 junior. He averages just about seven points per contest. And number 24, Braden Young, 
He is a six-foot junior, averaging just over eight points per game and a 31% three-point shooter this season. Again, for the Cary Blue Devils, they'll go with Smiley, Putnam, Young, Niedercore, and Young. For Liberty Benton, who will be represented as the visiting team tonight, they'll go with this look. Number two, Cam Garlock, a third-teamer in the BBC, a 5'10 senior, averaging five points per game. Number five, Carson Conaway, a first-teamer in the BBC, 13 points per game for the 6'5 junior. Number 10, Cason Doolittle, he is a 6'3 senior, the BBC Player of the Year, at just under 14 points per contest, a 33% three-point shooter. Number 14, Lincoln Garlock, a 5'9 senior, second team in the BBC, averages just under nine per contest, a 39% three-point shooter as well. And number 20, Reed Thomas, a 6'2 junior, BBC honorable mention, and he's actually shooting 33% from the three-point line this year. So we've got some kids who can chuck it from deep, although, for Kerry, the game may or well be won or lost there. I don't think that's the same thing for Liberty Benton. They definitely no. want to attack the the paint, see what they can get with knifing, maybe some kickouts for three. I got to watch out for though if he gets going is Lincoln Garlock. He's the guy that can really hurt you in a hurry. He's sort of the X factor kid for this Liberty Benton team. Yeah, he certainly is. And you know the other thing too in this game is defense. And both these teams come in here allowing less than 40 points a game. You know, which is phenomenal. I mean, you know. They're both averaging around the 56, 54, you know, points a game mark, but the whole team's under 40 points, and, and so you're going to see a lot of defense in this game. Now they don't turn the ball over a whole lot. You know, you got carries just under 10 turnovers a game. Same way with uh, Liberty Benton and back, they're actually <laughs> matching turnover to turnover. So you don't see a lot of turnovers between the two teams, but. You know, defense is going to be the thing. And, and if they can keep it down. The first game was that way. It was 54-32. Liberty Benton came out on top. So they they pretty much hit their averages there. You know, but you're right. Kerry may have to, you know, win this game from the three-point line. You know, because it's going to be tough to get on the inside against Conaway and Doolittle underneath there. But Liberty Benton, they got, they've got a variety of ways they can beat you. You know, they, they can come at you, you know, up-tempo. They can slow it down. They can run it half-court offense. They can run it into the paint. They're just mobile ways that they can beat you. Well, we've seen the game gravitate to more three-point shooting over the years. Certainly in the NBA, it's gone completely crazy with three-point shooting. I don't know that you're necessarily seeing it go that way in high school basketball, but I think you're seeing a lot more coaches who are giving the green light, and players like to take that three. Oh. And you're, We've seen a couple teams tonight, and the Blue Devils from Cary and the Spencerville Bearcats have really feasted off of that. Well, when you see players out there like uh, Alex Putnam, with 148, you know, <laughs> or Carter Smiley with 148 three-point attempts. Carey will win the tip, and we're underway here in game two at Miller City. Ball brought across midcourt. Young trying to attack. Dishes back to his right. Putnam gets it. Putnam goes to the baseline. Right now, you see Carey trying to find a way inside at the moment. Working around the perimeter. Bounce pass right side. Into the paint from the left side was Bryce Young. Gives it away, gets it right back, takes the three from the top. And that one is off the mark. Rebound, Conaway with it, fires it out. Lincoln Garlock on the right side. He'll give it back to his twin brother, Cam. You saw a lot of switching off by Kerry on their half-court offense, a lot of ball movement, trying to work it around to get that three-point shot. It just didn't fall for him this time. Nearly intercepted. We've got a loose ball on the floor. I think we'll get a hell ball. Liberty Benton fortunate to hang on to it, not turn it over here. Saw Coach Doug Whiteman talk to Lincoln Garlock a little bit after that pass as he just kind of hung it out there, and Kerry nearly came away with the turnover. Yeah, they're going to have to be much better at doing that. You know, you can't give these guys opportunities like that. You've got to hang on to it. You've got to limit turnovers for sure. Cam Garlock is fouled by Bryce Young coming across midcourt. Young really trying to get into him to try and pry the ball away when he picks up his first foul. Team's first here in the first quarter. Still scoreless on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Inbounds pass. Cam Garlock brings it across midcourt. Guarded by Young. Gives it to Reed Thomas. Around the perimeter right side, Doolittle find a nice quick pass to Kaysen, or Carson Conaway on the right block, puts it up and in for two points to break up the score, break open the scoring here. Yeah, that's a duo that can hurt you all night long, Doolittle and Conaway. They'll you know, like to pass it back and forth between the two of them, work on the inside, like I said, get that nice little inside shot. Very strong one-two combination. 
Another three ball up and off the mark. That one, Braden Young can't get it to go. Rebound will go to the Eagles. Reed Thomas gets the outlet pass out to Garlock. Into the corner, Lincoln Garlock. Entrance pass down low. Conaway turns, shoots, puts it up and in for two. Carson Conaway, all four of Liberty Benton's points here in the first couple of minutes of this first quarter. I'm already seeing the pattern develop there, Doug. <laughs> you know, get it on the inside to Conway and let him fight it in there, put it in. Three ball, well off the mark, an air ball, an offensive rebound. Nobody's really been able to come up with it. Carey will get it back. Pass back over, and Carey will control Braden Young. Trying to attack on the right side, cut off by Lincoln Garlock. Pass out to the left side. There's a three. That's off the mark. Rebound pulled down, going coast to coast. Caught away with his left hand from the left side. Puts it up and in for two more points. It's caught away six, carry nothing. We saw in the first game, Spencerville, another team that shoots a lot of threes, struggled in the first half from the three-point line. But they were able to create so many turnovers that the game was very close. Right now, Liberty Benton doing the bulk of the scoring, obviously up 6-0. Looking for the up and under move, Braden Young won't. He's not going to take the shot. Instead, he throws it across court. It's intercepted. Conaway over to the right side. Doolittle thought about the three. Takes it to the right elbow. Back to Cam Garlock. Garlock down the left side. Out to Lincoln Garlock for three. That's off the mark. Reed Thomas, the offensive board. And Liberty Benton will get another look at it here. They'll reset their half-court offense. Problem with shooting threes is they make those long rebounds, and Liberty Benton's been able to control those. That foul, I think, is going to be on Bryce Young, and he got caught kind of walking into the back there of Conaway. And if that's the case, that's his second here in the first quarter. And that will be the case. It's going to bring Nick Putman into the game. Liberty Benton inbounds pass. Conaway works it over at Garlock. Trying to go back to Conaway. Had the ball stripped, and coming up with it, Brad Young. They're going to get a foul on Liberty Benton, trying to get the ball back. That'll be on Carson Conaway, his first, team's first. Not a very crisp in, inbound pass or in, in pass there for a Liberty Benton. you got to be a little quicker with those. Really, the first time we've seen LBB any sort of sloppy here in this early going in this game. Been firing on all cylinders for the most part. Smiley drives, kick out. Over the corner, Putnam. Shot up, that one again off the mark. But a save, Young throws it to the baseline where he gets it to Nidakor. Up and under move and trying to find his way around Conaway. Got his own rebound, but a second attempt no good. Liberty Benton coming back the other way, still pitching a shutout here up 6-0. Conaway shot off the front of the rim, no good for three. Hustle it back the other way. And Lincoln Garlock nearly stripped the ball from Alexander Putnam. Knocked it out of bounds into the LB bench. Carey kind of turning up the heat a little bit too, trying to get a match, you know, up tempo to up tempo with Liberty Benton. I'm not sure that's a good idea right at the moment, but. Coach Jamie Young said he needed to match the intensity of Liberty Benton, so see if they're able to dial it up here. Right now, the Blue Devils just looking to get on the scoreboard. And there's a steal. Cam Garlock anticipated that one nicely, brings it in from the left side. He'll score, timeout taken. And on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard, it's Liberty Bet 8, carry 0. We're back after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Miller City here on WOSN. It's a sectional final matchup between Liberty Bent and Carey. It's the Eagles of LB up 8-0. Dar, they are all over the Blue Devils right now. Well, and the Blue Devils just can't buy a basket right now. And, and when you shoot those long threes like they've been shooting, you know, you get those long rebounds. And right now, Liberty Benton is getting those long rebounds, getting down the court quickly. And, you know, you can see their game plan for Liberty Benton already. Get it into Conaway. Yeah. Any way you can get it into him, let him dominate underneath the paint. You know, that's going to pull everybody in. It's going to have to for Kerry. That's going to leave the shooters on the outside open for Liberty Benton. Well, we're going to get a buzzer, and we'll bring it back. We can't even be blamed for that, Dar. Not a, no. The TV was ready. Bring it back down the floor as Braden Young, guarded by Garlock, throws it out of a double team. 
He'll give it away, get it right back. Bounce pass, Cam Garlock, another interception. Just absolutely patrolling the passing lanes right now. Lincoln Garlock to the left elbow. Gives it up to Cam. It looks underneath, there's nothing there though. And Carey wants to get it on the inside, but they just can't get it there. Doolittle gives it out to Lincoln Garlock. Three won't go, rebound. Called down by Young, long pass down the floor to Nick Putman. Putnam takes it to the free throw line, swings it over to the left side. Young, long skip pass. See where Carey's trying to maybe, if they can like just switch the floor quickly and try and get LB's defense off balance to take a three, but it hasn't happened. LB's rotated there very nicely with their defense. They certainly have it. And the other thing Carey's trying to do is get it down there as quickly as he can to try to catch LB's the center open. Stolen by Lincoln Garlock, coast to coast off the glass, good for two. Garlock's running a pickpocket ring right now. And it's 10-0 on the Finley Truck at RV scoreboard. LB leading carry. Just great defense. Well, we said that Carey might come into this with a chip on their shoulder. Liberty Benton coming in with something to prove as well, Dar. Yeah, they don't want this to be a close game. They want to run away with this really quickly. And, you know, right now their defense is just phenomenal underneath. And we'll get a whistle and a kick there. Actually, they're going to say he got his leg up into him, so it's going to be a Liberty Benton foul. He goes, but I scored a basket. Come on. <laughs> Case and Doolittle, the guilty party there, picks up his first team second. And a foul on the entrance pass. And that's going to send the Blue Devils to the line to shoot two here. Lincoln Garlock will pick up his first team's third. That'll send Dominic Yater to the line. Yater's first free throw off the mark. It's only his 20th free throw attempt this season, 32% free throw shooter. We'll get another look at it here. Not a lot of opportunities from the charity strike for him, but he will put Carey on the scoreboard, splitting the difference, hitting the second of two free throws, and they can get 10 to 1 now. 2 10 remaining in our first quarter of action. Doolittle across midcourt. Slows it up, looking. To his right, once Conaway nearly lost the ball out of bounds. Conaway nearly lost it, but the last bobble went off of Dominic Gator, and it will be Liberty Benton ball in the corner on the baseline. I tell you, Case or Doolittle does so much for Liberty Benton, and it, not only just you know like like Trenton Barraza was for Columbus Grove, he is for Liberty Benton as far as the floor general out there. Reed Thomas gets it underneath the bucket, throws it back out to Doolittle for three, just off the mark. Gator the rebound. And a long outlet pass down the floor to Smiley. Smiley to the baseline, cut off. They'll bring it back out towards the timeline. We're going to get a moving screen on the far side of the floor. That will indeed be the case. And Liberty Benton will go back the other way. So the offensive foul. Ends up being a turnover. Liberty Benton with the ball. Couple of substitutions. Jake Gherkin comes into the lineup. And Seth Elkert as well. And we're going to get Liberty Benton just giving the ball right back. Coach Doug Whiteman arguing his case, but it will, will be a charge against Liberty Benton there. That foul is going to be on Casey Doolittle. And one of the reasons you're arguing that foul is Doolittle picks up his second of the first quarter with a minute 35 remaining in the first. Yeah, you didn't want to see that happen at all. But, boy, that was a quick call, too, on it. Most certainly was, as the inbounds pass will come from Smiley. Everybody Benton's got some youth. They've played a lot of freshmen on their varsity team this year. They're a team with a, a pretty good winning record. A lot of times you don't see that many freshmen play, but it's a very talented freshman class. Jake Gerken, a sophomore. A very strong sophomore. There's another Liberty Benton foul. I think that one's on Conaway. That which is. His second one, too. So two of your impact players. So they're going to spend some time on the bench here with the minute 23 remaining in the first quarter. Both Conaway and Doolittle with two fouls each. 
Liberty Benton has committed five team fouls. That's going to be up to Gurton and Thomas underneath to control it. And Thomas's defense was strong, but the offense was even stronger from Alexander Putnam, who puts it in for two. First field goal for Carey here with a minute six remaining in the first quarter. See what Carey can do as far as taking advantage of the fact that two of the, the two top players for uh, Columbus or for uh, Liberty Benton are sitting on the bench right now. Elker at the right elbow, dishes back to Reed Thomas. Over to the right side. Cam Garlock trying to get in, but up in there, he'll give it back out to Elker. And we've got another offensive foul against Liberty Benton. And the officials are really watching out for that off the ball screen across the court right now. That'll be Jake Gherkin picking up his first. Now the sixth foul on Liberty Benton. So as hot of a start as Liberty Benton had got, things have certainly slowed down for the Eagles here in the last couple of minutes of this first quarter. You had an opportunity for Curry too because they're a 63% free throw shooting team. He gets some shots at the foul line, just continues. Pass underneath and again, defended well by Thomas, but Alexander Putnam just with the angles got the better of him, puts it in for two, suddenly Liberty Benton lead down to 5-10-5 on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Kirkin stops at the right elbow, looking for the backdoor cut to Cam Garlock. A bit ambitious there, threw it into traffic. It's a turnover, bringing it back down the floor. High off the glass, good for wow. two Carter Smiley. Suddenly back to a one possession game, 10-7. Link to the floor, pass or shot, not gonna go, and that'll do it for your first eight minutes of play. Again on the Philly Truck and RV scoreboard, 10 for Liberty Benton, seven for Carey, but it's the Blue Devils with the momentum. And we're back after this on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. And on that scoreboard right now, Liberty Benton got off to a hot start. They were pitching a shutout for the majority of the first quarter, Dar, but they only lead by three at the end of the first eight minutes, 10 to seven. And everything that went right for the Eagles there in the first four minutes, just the momentum did not sustain. Carey really started to ramp things up there in the last half of the first quarter. Well, and, the, and those fouls that were getting caught on Liberty Benton are really frustrating them right now. And when you've got uh, Conaway and, and Doolittle both sitting on the bench, you know, Carey's taking advantage of that, particularly Alexander Putnam. Putnam underneath the basket, you know, is taking advantage of it, you know. And so, you know, Liberty Benton's got to find a, a cure for this real quick. Whatever, you know, their, the referees are calling on them, they got to find out, you know, a way around that. Carey has the ball to start things off in the second quarter. Red Young, dribble penetration, then the kick out to Smiley. Trying to work it underneath. Yater passes outside. Still working this right sideline. Interior pass taken away by Lincoln Garlock over to Cam Garlock. And Cam going to be fouled on his way up from the left side. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Garlock a 67% free throw shooter on the season. That's unofficially the fifth turnover by Carey. Foul on Alexander Putnam. His first, team's third. And the first free throw is up and good for Garlock. 67% free throw shooter. Cam really got it going for Liberty Benton there in the first quarter as he was able to initiate a couple of transition buckets with steals as he hits the second free throw. And the Garlocks were in on a turnover there that got things going the other way. And Liberty Benton extends their lead back out to five as Young brings it down the floor. Looking inside, now swinging it right side. Yater gets it. Pass underneath, it's tipped. Gherkin comes up with it for the Eagles. And as Cam Garlock comes back down the floor, he's going to be fouled. That's not a foul that Jamie Young's going to be too happy with. You don't want to make that foul so far down the floor, well away from the bucket. No, you don't, but that was a smart move by that young man to, to cut in between those two defenders, knowing that he probably would get fouled on that one. It is the fourth foul on Carey. Committing the foul there was Austin Nadercore. Gherkin passes off. Gives it to Cam Garlock. Coming in from the left side, high off the glass, no good. Yater the rebound. And an outlet to Braden Young. Flies it down the floor, wide open, three coming. 
That's off the mark, though, from Carter Smiley. An offensive rebound and a defensive foul against Liberty Benton. And this is going to be what you talked about, Dar, where this is a good free throw shooting team and carry. They're going to get some looks as they're already in the bonus. That's the seventh foul on LB. Second foul against Jake Girk and the sophomore who just come off the bench. So LB with three players with two fouls right now. But the first of the bonus free throws, no good. Rebound chase down Gerken, and Liberty Benton will go back the other way. And that's the big thing right now for Kerry, is the fact that the Liberty Benton has three players with two fouls apiece on it. Lincoln Garlock, far side of the floor with the ball, gives it up to Cam Garlock. As the Eagles originate the offense from well outside the perimeter, skip pass over to Reed Thomas. Thomas puts it on the floor, trying to get around Yater, takes it to the baseline. Carey fans wanted to travel. That was not a travel. That was an excellent find, though, as Lincoln Garlock was wide open up top, knocked down the three. And you can see the, you know, Jamie Young over there just put his hands on top of his head. And as soon as the ball went to Garlock, he knew that was going in. Good attack by Yader on the left side. He'll put it up off the glass. Good for two. Pulls it back to a six-point game. Okay. Three point for Yader right now. And on the Finley truck and RV scoreboard, it's 15 to nine. Liberty Benton leading Carey. Elkert trying to come in from the right side. Picks up, is dribbled back up to Garlock for three. That, that one short, and that'll go out of bounds. Right now, too, because you, if you saw Reed Thomas was wide open here on the wing out here for Liberty Benton, and when Garlock took that shot, you know, so somebody's missing an assignment, you know, leaving these guys wide open. Back to the other end, Carey with the ball. As they get it back to Carter Smiley. Smiley, right side to Gator. Dominic Gator. Working over to the left side. They just lost the handle on it as he went in. Reed Thomas hits the deck to get the ball back for Liberty Benton. Cam Garlock tried to do the same thing, splitting a couple of defenders. That time lost it. I think this is going to be a Liberty Benton foul as Reed Thomas got on the floor for it, but he went into the carry player. And will send him to the line to shoot. The one of one has headed to the charity strike as Austin Nidercourt. Knight, of course, a 64% free throw shooter. 21 for 33 coming into this game. Another one of the younger Eagles takes the floor. That'll be Miles Bailey wearing number 32. Well, we're certainly going to find out what Liberty Benton's depth is. And again, Carey's will have opportunities from the free throw line if they can draw fouls, but so far on the front end of two one of ones they've missed. Carey brings it back down the other way. Yeah, they're leaving too many points on the, off the board right now. Elkert attacking from the right side, draws contact. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Just got the defense a little bit out of balance. Recognized it, made a nice move to come in from the right. He'll go to the line for his free throw opportunities. A foul on Carter Smiley, his first, team sixth. The first free throw is up and good for Seth Elkert. Elker does 35% free throw shooter. You wouldn't have convinced me on that shot there. For Second free throw. Looked pretty confident on yeah, both those. Yeah, looked dark. good there. Hits them both. Liberty Benton extends their lead back out to eight. They've led by as many as ten. And with the eight, they were able to extend their full court pressure, but with that pressure comes the chance to foul, and that's just what happened. Miles Bailey picks up the foul, his first. It's to be the ninth on Liberty Benton here in this half. Let's see if Carey can take care of business from the free throw line. They've been given the opportunities, but have not been able to make good on them. Young's first free throw rattled around, but found its way through. Yeah, Young is 65% free throw shooter, averaging just over eight points a game. Young second opportunity finds the mark as well. Brings it back to a six-point deficit for the Blue Devils of Cary. Full-court man pressure. Reed Thomas sets the screen and frees Miles Bailey to get across midcourt. Bailey picks up a dribble along the perimeter. Up top now to Lincoln Garlock. Big thing for Liberty Bent right now is weather the storm with, the, with Conway and Doolittle sitting on the bench. See Cam Garlock back at the scorer's table, ready to go back in. Reed Thomas goes baseline and throws it back out to Lincoln Garlock. Garlock 
Brought it back out towards the volleyball line, over to Bailey in the quarter. Picks up his dribble, nearly left alone for a moment, but then coming back out to get him a putt. Is that a five-second call? That is. Yep. I don't know if it's going to call a timeout. Liberty Benton nearly, narrowly escaping a five-second call. We'll take a timeout as well. 4.07 remaining here in the first half. Liberty Benton 17, carry 11. Back after this. There's no admission fee to watch this game, but there is a cost for TV44 to broadcast it to you. Say thanks to viewer supported TV44 by sending them a financial gift right now. TV44 relying on the donations of viewers to enable the airing of this game and all other locally produced programs. Donate now by visiting WTLW.com and clicking the donate button. Back here at Miller City where Liberty Benton leads the Cary Blue Devils by a score of 17 to 11 on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Back to the action we go. Nearly a five-second violation. But a timeout kept the ball in the possession of the Liberty Benton Eagles. Right now, Kerry's playing great half-court defense, but I don't think Liberty Benton is really in that big of a hurry to score. Lincoln Garlock begs to differ as he does. Yeah, he does. Three-point lead. He's the guy that can really stretch a defense. But you're right, they don't have to be all that impatient in their attack. That's Garlock's, Lincoln Garlock's second three-pointer. Makes it a nine-point game. I mean, they have the advantage. They've got their key players sitting on the bench, but they have the advantage. They can just run it out a little bit. Miles Bailey, the freshman with the steal, going to go coast to coast. And going to be called for the charge. As the carry player, I believe that was Carter Smiley who set up in front of him. Got settled in. Bailey's going to commit his second foul. That's going to be the 10th on Liberty Benton since it's an offensive foul. No free throws coming. That's now the fourth player for Liberty Benton to have two fouls here in the first half of action. Nice crossover oh. left side. Goodbye. And set packing. <laughs> Seth Elkert denies Brayden Young's opportunity. Young made a great move out near the left elbow. Yeah, he did. But Seth Elkert was lying in wait for that one. And no shot, they're going to call a foul on the floor against Liberty Benton, I believe, as the pass, the entrance pass was received. It'll be two free throws regardless, though, because it's double bonus time now for Carey. Foul is on Self Elkert, his first. First free throw off the mark, and Carey still struggling from the charity strike. Yeah, the bad thing is it's all missing on that first of the one-on-ones. Indeed, they didn't take care of their opportunities there. Second free throw, that one hard off the front of the rim. Caught Reed Thomas by surprise. Elker came flying in to save it for the Eagles, though. Bailey back down the floor. He'll swing it over to Thomas. Cam Garlock gets it. Garlock gives it back to Bailey. Bailey backs it away from the free throw line. No, no real panic from Coach Doug Whiteman. He's got, again, his two leading scorers on the bench with two fouls in Carson Cottaway and Case and Doolittle. He's really letting the, the depth of this team show right now, Dar. He certainly is, and this is really important for Liberty Benton as we get it down the tournament trail. Reed Thomas misses from inside, but the rebound was tipped out of bounds. Liberty Benton will get another look at it. I mean, you get an opportunity like this to get these guys into the game this early on in a lot of playing time, it's going to be... It'll reap benefits for you down the road. That's a very good point. That's a quality investment of time for these youngsters. And they've been able to hold their own out there. Cam Garlock trying to get down the lane. Liberty Benton fans wanting a foul on the contact. Not going to get it. Thomas into the lane. His pass to Elkert intercepted. And almost losing it was Smiley. And... The Blue Devils very fortunate to get two out of there. They almost lost the ball in transition. But even with the, the delay of the timing there, Dominic Yader going to put it up and in for two for his fifth points of the game. I give credit to Yader on that one, just to be able to grab that ball and put it in. Foul away from the bucket, coming out making that contact is Braden Young as he fouls Bailey. 20 to 13. And again, tonight's scoreboard presented by Finley Truck and RV. You're complete. Automotive experience at competitive prices. 
Jake Durkin going to come in for Reed Thomas. They'll be able to keep some size on the block with Gherkin coming in. And you got a freshman and a sophomore in the front court now. And the free throw off the front of the rim, no good. Remains a seven point game. Ball brought across midcourt, Young. Gets the ball back to Smiley. Smiley behind the back dribble. Young went through the paint, Yater with it. A long three on the way, and Carey finally finds Pater. That one out of the hands of Carter Smiley makes it a four-point contest. Well, that's the guy I was talking about. Had 148 three-point shots coming into this game, shooting 40%. Suffice it to say, he has the green light. Yes, he does. Anywhere and anytime. Elkert with it. Gives it up to Cam Garlock looking underneath. Garlock to Miles Bailey. Bailey will back it away. Goes over to Gherkin on the right side. Liberty Benton now with the ball inside a minute. Nice pass, Bailey into Elkert. Elkert went up, but they got tied up. Didn't want to get called for the up and down, so he tried to throw it back outside. And ended up turning it over. Young challenging from the left side. Throws it back out. Here comes the runner from the baseline. Will not go out of the hands of Carter Smiley. Neither team getting second, second chance shots underneath the basket, so they're both holding each other to one and out. Most definitely are. Now we'll see if Liberty Benton plays for the last shot of the quarter. Looks like that's what they want to do with 19 seconds left. Cam Garlock comes out to get the ball. Guarded by Putman. And a little aggressive by Carter Smiley there. <laughs> The ball was kind of put out in front of him, but he led with his hand and just ran right into Cam Garlock. Carl Garlock will go to the line and shoot the one of one. Cam Garlock might want to look for his wallet, make sure he didn't get <laughs> bugged just now. Reed Thomas will come back into the lineup and places Jake Gherkin. Garlock in the line, front end of the one of one is up off the back of the rim. Neither team really making good on the one-on-one -on -one free throws here. Five seconds left. Carey with the ball. They get it back to Smiley. Smiley nearly slipped. Trying to get down the lane. Euro step off the glass. No good. And that will do it for your first half of action. Liberty Benton leading off the Finley Truck and RV School Board after two quarters of play, 20-16. We'll be back with stats and analysis on WOSN. We are at the half at Miller City in the sectional final game. Boys Division Three High School Basketball. Liberty Benton and the Cary Blue Devils duking it out. LB with a four-point advantage on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard after two quarters of play, up by a score of 20 to 16. LB got out to an early lead, up about 10-0. But that lead was cut down to three at the end of the first quarter, back and forth in the second quarter between both teams. LB extended their lead out to four bringing us to that uh, 20 to 16 margin. Dar, what have you seen? Well, I think it comes down to two, basically rhythm and momentum. Neither team able to establish either one of those. Liberty Benton had it starting out, but the fouls started to build up. You know, the two top players had to take the bench. You know, then Garlock had to take the bench too as well. So they couldn't get into a flow. There was no real flow, and, and Kerry couldn't get into a flow because they weren't hitting the baskets. And even though they were getting to the foul line, they weren't hitting their free throws. They were missing on the front ends of the one ones, you know, which left a lot of points out there off the board for them. You know, so it's really coming down to, you know, which team can establish the flow of the game and, and you know, go from there. And we'll have to see what happens in the second half. But, you know, I was looking at the stats on this thing, you know, combined, looking at the two teams. Together, they're three for 14 from three-point line, seven for 14 at the free throw line, and have 17 turnovers between the two of them. So, you know, it those are not numbers that are going to put a lot of points on the board, which is obviously <laughs> 20 to 16 or not. You know, so, you know, neither team's shooting particularly well, uh, but it, it really comes down to the fact that there's just not any real rhythm to this game. I mean, when you get those fouls building up like that, and you've got to start moving guys in and out, you know, it, you know, you really can't get anything going that way, and neither team's been able to do that. I'll give Liberty Ben a lot of credit, though. You know, like we said, you know, you're getting guys in there to play that 
probably haven't played you know that many minutes all season long. Certainly not as meaningful minutes no. as what they just played. And they held their own. I mean, you know, you know, Doug Whiteman's got to be happy with that that particular thing that he's getting from his players. You know, from his bench is the fact that they're holding their own. They're not really putting a lot of points out there or really building a lead, but they're holding their own against Carey's number one offense out there. I think the question for Carey will be, will it be like the first game we saw here tonight where Spencerville, another team that, that uses a lot of three-point three shooting to their advantage, so does Carey, but those shots haven't been falling. We saw Spencerville get hot from three in the third quarter. If Carey is able to do that, how then does Liberty Bent respond? Are they able to get, after a long stretch on the bench, Carson Conway and Kaysen do little up and running? Uh, because those two were really taking off early in the first quarter before they picked up those early fouls. Yeah, and Liberty Bend's done a nice job on, on Carter Smiley, Smiley, who's had the only three-pointer for uh, Carey in the first half. You know, a guy that's shot 148 three-pointers, he's 40% three-point shooter, but he hasn't had any opportunities out there. He had that one, you know, he threw it in from the concession stand almost out there, that long three. <laughs> but, you know, he just hasn't had the opportunities, which give Liberty Bend credit. They've been out there on him. Now, you know, without Doolittle and Conway, which we'll see in the third quarter again back out there because they only have two fouls apiece, so they'll be back out there. That's when they were dominating the paint and, you know, keeping Carey away from the basket. And, and with those guys coming back in here, that could be a real Achilles heel for Carey because they're not going to be able to get back inside there again the way they, they were with the, the second team out there for uh, Liberty Benton. All right, with that said, we'll take a break. Third quarter action coming up. Again, Liberty Benton leading at the Cary Blue Devils by a score of 20 to 16. More basketball to come right here on WOSF. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. And on the scoreboard right now as we enter the third quarter, Liberty Benton, the Eagles leading the Cary Blue Devils 20 to 16. Again, Liberty Benton beat Cary by a score of 54-32 back in January. And uh, looked like they were on their way to a 20-point victory in the early parts of this game as they got out to a 10-0 lead. Uh, but Carey really battled back. Shots started going down. The fouls started adding up for Liberty Benton. We'll see how they respond here. Of course, this is the first game of the tournament for Carey. Meantime, Liberty Benton beat Parkway in the section of semis by a score of 62-36. You don't typically think of a team having any sort of rust when you get to this point, but some, with both teams that are coming off the bye, we've seen them sh start off cold from the field mm -hmm. tonight, though, with uh, Spencerville in the early game as well. Well, new gymnasium, yep. too, you know, uh, different rims, you know, what gives, what doesn't give, that kind of thing as well. But if the Blue Devils can really start cranking it up in three-point range, we can make it a different game. Well, Liberty Benton will have the ball to start things off in the third quarter. They'll go with their original starting five, as will the Blue Devils. Conaway to do little along the baseline left side right back yep. to Conaway and just missed from point blank rebound hauled down by Carey that was the look they wanted Dar. it sure was and he was wide open for it Braden Young attacks the paint now throws it back outside to Bryce Young up top to Alexander Putnam kick out three ball well off the mark rebound Doolittle down the floor Cam Garlock Garlock will slow it up to Doolittle Doolittle into the paint, shot up off the back of the glass, no good, and that ball stripped as he went back up. Well, they're going to say that Doolittle last touched it, though, and we'll go back the other way. Seth Elkert coming back on nearly immediately here. I think Lincoln Garlock going to have a seat with the trainer. I don't know if he tweaked his ankle there or not, but we'll keep an eye on that. That or somebody kicked him in the calf muscle. Quite possibly. The ball got knocked out of bounds. And we'll get a foul called there as well. So it's Seth, uh, Seth Elkhart, and that, that gives him his second foul. Inbounds pass will come from Carey. Pass over to the left side. Bryce Young gets it. Young looking low. Still looking nothing there. Kim Garlock nearly came up with another steal there. Yeah, you don't want to dribble it in front of you because he's going to take it away from you if you do. 
into the paint. And Seth Elkert got drawn up off his feet, jump stopped by Carter Smiley, and Elkert came down right on top of him. Now Elkert got up a little bit gingerly there too. Two quick fouls on that young man. He's up to three now. Lincoln Garlock gets back to the scoreboard. I don't know if they're going to wave him in, but they blew the whistle before this gets started. And they will wave Lincoln Garlock into the game. He'll take the place of Seth Elker. So it looks like Lincoln Garlock will be all right. He'll be still with that four-point lead. Into Bryce Young. Works it around the perimeter right side. Braden Young, right back to Bryce. And now into the hands of Carter Smiley. Terry being pretty patient here. Yes, they are. They're running a nice half-court offense, trying to find that open look. Again, that's a nice fake on the three. Then Bryce Young steps in, hits the long two to make it a two-point game. You know, a lot of teams that hit threes in bunches will sometimes start forcing them up, and that's not been the case for Carey here tonight. No, no. They're, they're still very patient trying to find that, you know, the best shot they can find. Up and under move going to his left by Carson Conaway. Conaway will go to the line to shoot two. Nice job forcing the action into paint. Conaway earns a trip to the charity stripe. Conaway, a 6'5 junior. He'll be back next year for this Liberty Event Eagle team. Austin Idacore with the foul, and it will be his second. Conaway, second opportunity. Off the front of the rim, no good. Got uh -huh. his own rebound. He knew it from the time it left his hand. It wasn't there, but then got the ball stripped as he went to try and go back up. So just hit one of the free throws to make it a three-point lead. Nearly got the sneaky put back. Yes, he did. That was quick movement off the foul line to get to it. Smiley will get over to Bryce Young. Young to the left elbow, and that pass off the mark. It was picked away by Doolittle. Give it up to Cam Garlock. Skip pass Lincoln Garlock. Three from the left side off the mark. But Doolittle comes up with the rebound. Baseline jumper is up. Off the mark as well. And both teams just struggling to find the bottom of the net right now. Well, I tell you, they're getting rusty right off the bat. They just haven't been able to find anything right at the moment. Good they looks for both squads, but again, just not shots will not go. Bryce, Bryce Young dishes back to Putnam for three. And that's going to be a rebound to pull down by Conaway, and he draws contact from the backside. But again, the foul starting out here in the second half. No kind of continuity that anybody can ever develop in this game. You know, they just cannot get any momentum built up. Adercourt just picked up his third, second on Carey in the second half. Played three minutes in the third quarter. Not a lot of scoring to write home about. Just a free throw for Liberty Benton and one field goal for Carey thus far in the third. Garlock underneath, Doolittle shot up off the glass, no good. Yater fights off the attempt at the offensive rebound to grab it for the Blue Devils. That's three or four shots underneath that Liberty Benton's miss. That most definitely is. As well, that nearly was a kick. It was a nice take by Doolittle, but then his foot just flicked it right back out to carry. They get another look at it. On the rebound, it was deflected. The offensive put back again from close range, no good. Liberty Benton coming back down the floor. Conaway through traffic, working around the perimeter. Back out to Conaway, three-pointer from the corner. No good, long rebound. Carey wants to run. Putnam going to be fouled on his way back down the floor, and that is going to be the third Ooh. on Carson Conaway. Ooh, that's, that's, that one hurts. Yes, it definitely is. And you see Seth Elkert hustle over to the scoreboard. Conaway will come out for another extended period on the bench. The problem is that Seth, Seth Elkert's coming in there with three fouls of his own. Yes, he is. And we saw LB use the depth of their bench to really mitigate things there in the first half. They may have to do it again here in the second half. Trying to work it down the right side of the lane is Smiley. Smiley finds a backdoor cutter and Young. Young shot up, no good. Rebound tipped around and... Nearly stolen for Reed Thomas, coming up with it, Lincoln Garlock. Garlock wants to run, goes up high off the glass, good for two. 
Just a soft touch to make that one go. That's 10 points now for Lincoln Garlock. And right now, all you can do is, is kind of like organize chaos out there, the way both teams are playing. A little bit as Young tries to take it down the right side. They'll give it up to Bryce Young. Swing it to the left side, smiling. Working it in, Braden Young shot up from in the paint. And he'll grab a field goal that way. Second field goal of the half for the Cary Blue Devils. Pulls them back to within three. Cam Garlock, excuse me, that's going to be Casey Doolittle. And we'll get a foul on a reaching violation as Braden Young tried to go over the top of Reed Thomas. Jake Girk can get a come into the lineup for the Liberty Benton Eagles here. That'll be Young's second foul of the night. The third on Carey. Both teams with three team fouls here with three minutes left in the third period. And we're going to get another whistle on the entrance pass. Alexander Putnam will pick up his second, fourth on the Blue Devils. It's Jake Gherkin set to inbound. The sophomore looking, looking. They're going to be called for a five-second violation. Just a well-defended play by Carey, kind of slow developing by the Eagles, and Carey was able to deny any entrance pass. Well, I'll tell you what, Doug, we've seen a lot of action here in this third quarter, not very much scoring, <laughs> and both these teams have used a lot of energy. You can look out there and look at them. You know, the guys are you know, huffing, puffing a little bit. They've done a lot of work into this third quarter, but nobody's been able to put any points on the board. Noah Trevino will come into the lineup for Liberty Benton. Give Cam Garlock a breather here. Yeah, it is a lot of effort for little result as far as scoring goes. As Braden Young tries to go to the left, but good job defensively by Doolittle to cut off all the avenues. Now coming in hard from the left side is the lay Carter Smiley. And one with a chance to tie this game up. The Trevino seventh came point. across late. That's his seventh point. He's going to, you know, a 67% free throw shooter. Smiley, an opportunity to tie this game up. And that one finds the mark. And we are all square on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. 23-23 with 2.33 remaining in the third quarter. Doolittle wants to take it right oh, to the my hole. my goodness. Draws the contact, puts it in for two. And believe it or not, that is Doolittle's first basket of the night. That is hard to believe. There was no doubt where he was going when he got the ball there. Saw the seam in the defense, attacks the rim, and puts Liberty Benton back up. LB has never trailed in this game. That was the first time this game has been tied in quite some time. I mean, he's been around the basket all night long. Doolittle's bonus free throw is up and good. And LB puts their lead back out to three. Ball brought down the floor by Braden Young. Young draws contact. Just kind of put the shot up as he was drawing the contact. See if he can get to the free throw line. And he will. The foul going to be on Lincoln Garlock, who picks up his second team's fifth. Both teams have five fouls, so we can see a lot of free throws tonight, Dar. We sure can. And it, like I said, it really is affecting the flow of this game, which there is no flow in this game right now. <laughs> And we saw it in the first half, you know, the fouls and that kind of thing. It, you just kind of slow down everybody's momentum. Nobody could really build anything up. After Liberty Benton jumped out to that lead, it just kind of slowed down from that point on. Braden Young will hit one of two free throws to make it a two-point game, 26-24. And attacking the bucket and fighting his way back to the free throw line will be Casey Doolittle again. This may be what the offense has to be for Liberty Benton here for just a little bit until they can really find any sort of scoring rhythm. Just get inside, see if you can get contact, and go to the free throw line. That's the fourth foul on Austin Niedercourt. He had just come back in with his third, and he will exit the game as Case and Doolittle hits the first free throw to make it a three-point contest. Well, we said that both these teams are fairly good three-point or free throw shooting teams at 63%. Second free throw is good. Doolittle buries a pair. 
I mean, it's a four-point Liberty Benton advantage. I mean, the two of, between the two of them, they were only 7-14 that first half. But this may came, come down to free throw shooting. <laughs> that could make it very interesting. It could be real interesting. Free throws have gone tonight. Carey is, in particular, has not been able to take advantage. Just young. Trying to go around, do little, do little swats it. Finds its way to Garlock. Lincoln Garlock coming in from the right side, and he has it stripped. Seth Elkert comes up with a loose ball. He'll have it taken away from him. Hustling it back down the floor, Nick Putnam. P Putnam passes over to the left side. Three-pointer on the way from Smiley, but the rebound is tipped back out to Young. Now Yader will get it in the corner. Smiley attacking, and just went in a little out of control, looking for contact, not going to get bowed out with the whistle there. Liberty Benton coming the other way. Doolittle spots up, uh, cans it for goes. two from about eight feet on the left side. Liberty Benton extending their lead to six. A minute nine remaining in the third quarter. Seven points now for Doolittle all here in the third quarter. Young will give it up to Smiley. Her hands the ball back to Putnam. Bryce Young for three on the left side. Braid Young, pardon me, shot up, no good. Rebound, Seth Elker. 48 seconds left. Coach Doug Whiteman says, slow it down. Let's play for one here, up six. Everybody betting we'll see if they can add two or three to it here, heading towards the end of the third quarter. I'll tell you what, Doug, we knew this was going to be a low-scoring game. Both teams coming in averaging under 40 points on defensive average. But I didn't expect this. It's, it's been hard to get points. They have been hard to come by in this one. I'll be going to run out of clock here as Doolittle dribbles out near midcourt. And neither team has been particularly prolific from outside here. We'll see. Doolittle's really been the bulk of the offense in the third quarter. It's just attacking the rim and able to draw, draw contact. We'll see if that's what they go for here. Seems to be the case. Had it stripped, but then it got away from Carter Smiley. Smiley had the steal in hand, but then it went off of his leg and out of bounds. Liberty Benton will get it back. Now they're going to bring in Conaway for Reed Thomas with 1.3 remaining. Getting Conaway with three fouls. Trevino to inbound. Lob pass up to Conaway. Came down with it. Put the shot up. Just misses at the buzzer. That'll do it for the third quarter. On the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard, Liberty Bent leading carry by a score of 30 to 24. We're back after this on WOSM. Welcome back to Miller City as we enter the fourth quarter of this sectional final matchup of Boys Division Three basketball. Liberty Bent extending their lead to six at the end of three quarters, up by a score of 30 to 24 on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Six-point lead, a hard fought to get to that six-point advantage, but the Eagles have gradually extended their lead at the end of each quarter. First up three, then four, now six. Well, and, and they've been consistent. Ten points in the first, ten points in the second, ten points in the third. So. You know, and they've been able to hold carry to under 10 points every quarter. But uh, we'll see what this fourth quarter is going to bring because, man, both teams in, you know, getting close to foul situation where everybody's going to be going to the foul line. You know, it may come down to that. Who's gonna, who can outshoot the other one at the foul line? Now, when it's all said and done, free throws could be the story when this one is set. Over the left side, smiling, trying to take it into the paint. Now, throws it down to Yater. New fans efforting a travel there, not going to get that call. As Smiley works it back over to Yader. Had his man, decided not to go to Putnam. Carey being very deliberate right now. They want the best shot that they can get. Well, still plenty of time. You're only down by six. So, again, I've been impressed that they just haven't just started jacking up threes, taking it hard to the hole, but getting a little over his skis was Alexander Putnam. Just couldn't quite find the angle, and it will be Liberty Benton going back the other way, looking to extend their lead. Well, the other thing, too, is Liberty Benton's been doing a better job of rebounding, particularly because you got Doolittle and Conway back in the game. They got a foul and a reach-in violation there. That's going to be the third foul on Alexander Putnam. Be the seventh on carry, so one of one free throws coming up for the Eagles. Casey Doolittle misses on the front end, though. Actually a very solid three, or free throw shooter at 
Couldn't get that one to go, though. And Lincoln Garlock just came in, swipes the ball, takes it all the way, and lays it in for two. He just sprinted straight <laughs> at the ball and took it away and just kept the stride down the court. And been a nice job of getting to the basket after that, too. That's turnover number 10 for Carey. Extends the Liberty Bent and lead to eight. Here comes a long three, and I'm not sure if Elker got a piece of that or not, but the rebound came down to the offensive player, and Dominic Yeager who turns around, makes the bucket from short range, and pulls the Blue Devils back to within six. That gives uh, him seven points on the night. A little underneath to Conaway, who throws it back out. Garlock shot up, no good, rebound tipped. Braden Young comes with it. Going down the floor, Yader. Yader trying to spin into the paint. He was cut off by Conaway. Blue Devils. I give we'll pull it back out to midcourt. Young attacks, fakes the pass to his right, goes up with his left, draws contact, and will go to the line to shoot two. Foul is on Cam Garlock, and that'll just be his first. It'll be the sixth on Liberty Benton, though, so we're going to see a lot of free throws the rest of the way here in the fourth quarter. Shot up and good for Young. Gives him six points on the night right now. Braden Young goes back to the charity strike. And that one is good as well. Carey back within four. Cam Garlock gets the entrance pass. Gonna bring it down to his right. Trying to get it to Doolittle. Doolittle gives away to Garlock right back to Doolittle. Gonna guard him one-on-one. -on -one. Now they throw the double team and it is stripped. Doolittle nearly poked it away. Ends up in the hands of Smiley. Smiley draws oh. contact. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Nearly got the scoop yeah. to go. And an opportunity to cut this to a two-point game. I'll tell you what, Doug, Carey, Carey is battling hard. They just can't seem to get over the hump. You know, they get within, you know, two, three, four points. Lincoln, Gar or excuse me, Lincoln Garlock was called for the foul. Carter Smiley hits that free throw. And the second free throw good as well. We've got a two-point game, and you're right. Every time Carey makes the push, They've been able to tie it up once. They get within one or two points, but have not been able to sustain the momentum. Right now, Coach Doug Whiteman for Liberty Benton wants to take a timeout and talk about it. We'll take a timeout as well on the quickly struck at RV scoreboard. 32 for Liberty Benton, 30 for Carey. We are back after this. Well, do you enjoy games like this one? Are you thankful for the chance to showcase our local high school teams on TV? Please consider making a donation to TV44 so we can keep airing games just like this one. You can donate online right now at WTLW.com or send a gift by phone by calling 419-339-4444. We really do appreciate it. And on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard, it's 32 Liberty Benton, 30 for the Cary Blue Devils. Kid, this is a game that Carey lost by 22 points back in January. This game has been much more evenly matched. It has been. And, and, you know, I don't think either team came into the game expecting what they're getting right now, you know, with all the fouls that they've seen in this game. There's another one right there. Yes, there was. And we're going to see free throws the rest of the way home for both teams. One-on-one -on -one free throw is coming up. The foul, that's going to be it for Austin Niedercorn as he picks up his fifth foul here with 5.13 remaining in the fourth quarter. Austin unable to score tonight. He's over three at the free throw line. You can see a little frustration on his face over on the bench. He'll take the rest of the evening off the free throw, though. No good, and I think they're actually going to call Conaway for a lane violation as he got across the lane too early. He nearly got an offensive rebound and a put back on a short free throw earlier in the game. That time the officials looking and thought that he would a little bit early. Yeah, but you're right, Doug. We're going to see a lot of free throws in this game. It's going to come down to who can hit the most of them. Attacking the lane, left to right off the glass. Good for two. Carter Smiley knocks this one up at 32 apiece. 
That's 10 points now for Smiley. Now the question for Liberty Benton, can they withstand one more carry push? And for Carey, can they finally take a lead in this contest? They've tied it a couple of times, but have never led. 440 separating us from the end of the fourth quarter. Doolittle, left elbow. Got a nice cut to uh, Reed Thomas. Back to Doolittle. The three, no good. Rebound pulled down by Braden Young. And I can see Carey going right to the basket again to try to draw that foul or get the two points. Young going to go, you're right. Went right at it. Had to put it up high to get it over the outstretched arms of the Liberty Benton defense. Conaway comes up with the rebound, and he's going to be fouled immediately by Braden Young. Conaway a chance to put Liberty Benton up again. The foul will be on Braden Young again, his third. Ninth on the Blue Devils. Conaway has had his struggles at the line this year. 54% free throw shooter on the season. And the free throw rims in and out. No good. Putnam the rebound. Fires it down the floor. Here comes a three for the lead. Ooh. Will not go out of the hands of Bryce Young. Rebound. Conaway. Liberty Benton will bring it across the timeline. I don't think that's a good shot that Jamie Young, coach for Kerry, wanted to see. I think he pulled the trigger a little bit too quick. As much as they have the green light, you'd like to see the offense run a little bit. And that's going to be a foul on Kerry. They're going to test Conaway at the line again. I don't know if they wanted to foul there. Alexander Putnam picks up his foul. That's his fifth foul now. So as much as we've talked about the foul issues for Liberty Benton, it's two players who have fouled out now for the Kerry Blue Devils. And a timeout taken, a full timeout will be taken by the Blue Devils with 348 remaining in the fourth quarter. We're all square and 32 apiece on the Philly Truck and RV scoreboard back after this on WOSN. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. And on the scoreboard right now, 32 for Carey, 32 for Liberty Benton. As we head into the nitty gritty of the fourth quarter here, Dar. I'll tell you what, you know, but right now with Carey, with two of their big players, you know, there are two guys underneath, predominantly underneath the basket for them, they're sitting on the bench with five fouls each. You know, it's going to come down to a struggle for them underneath the control, Conway. You know, and Elkert and Doolittle underneath that basket. 348 remaining in the fourth quarter. And again, I think Carey not maybe happy with the fouls, but they've been happy with the results as Conaway has not been able to connect. Now he was able to. Gives Liberty Benton the lead back. I guess the silver lining of all the fouls was that Liberty Benton was struggling from the charity stripe up until that point. Second free throw is good as well. So Conaway able to give Liberty Benton a two-point lead with 3.46 remaining in the fourth. And that's going to be hurtful for the Blue Devils if he starts to find his touch at the foul line because that's the guy that's probably going to get the ball underneath there and draw the fouls. Most definitely. Bryce Young swings it left side to E.J. Bowes. First time we've seen E.J. here tonight. Going to try and get it to EJ back in the corner, but that ball tipped out of bounds along the baseline by the Eagles. It will be the Blue Devils with the pass from their own baseline. Young to inbound. Needs to get it in, and a five second violation. Wow. Both teams have been guilty of a five second violation tonight. Turnover number 11 for Carey. Strong denial defense by the Liberty Benton Eagles there. Had a good job of switching off on guys and making sure, making him not be able to find anybody. Ball will be brought up the floor by Doolittle. Hands the ball off to Cam Garlock. Over to Seth Elker. Freshman has played big minutes for the Liberty Benton Eagles tonight. And gets passed down low. Conaway packed as he goes up. He'll go to the line and shoot two. I think the message is clear. If they get it to Carson Conaway underneath, they're going to put hands on him right away and make him earn him from the free throw line. And Smiley picks up his second. And if he can find that touch, what he did on the last two free throws, 
Whoa. That one just grazed the front of the iron. No good. What an opportunity to make it a three-point game here. And he splits the difference, hits a couple, or hits one of the two. Makes it 35 to 32. Behind the back dribble as Young tries to attack. Garlock nearly picked it off. But Smiley is able to get it in. Working around left side, Young. Back over to the left side, Carter Smiley. It looked like they wanted to throw a double team at him. Smiley attacks and will find the free throw line. With just a little bit of contact as he went up. Case Doolittle will pick up his third foul. It'll be the eighth on the Eagles. Now he's played this whole second half with two fouls, and that's just his third one now. Some big free throws coming up for Carter Smiley, a 67% free throw shooter. Able to knock that one down. Points number 11 for him. And a chance to make this a one point contest here. That one finds its mark as well. One point game. Garlock will bring the ball down the floor for Liberty Bet. Cross midcourt passes right side. Doolittle with it to Elkert. Picks up his dribble, looking underneath. Found his man, Conaway. Conaway off the glass, too strong. Rebound pulled down by Bryce Young. Carry a chance for their first lead of the evening. Smiley into the paint. Kick out into the corner, shot fake. Smiley got to get it back, puts up a three. That one, a high arc and shot won't go. Rebound ripped down by Conaway. Doolittle all the way, coast to coast. Draws contact on the way up, and will go to the line to shoot two. A nice outlet pass in the transition to set that up. And Conaway goes to the line. Or excuse me, Doolittle goes to the line. A 73% free throw shooter. The foul on Nick Putnam, his second. Free throw rattles around and finds its way through. Doolittle now four for six at the foul line. Second opportunity for Liberty Benton. It's up. That one off the mark. I think the question at this point, Dar, is which team will be able to do just enough from the free just throw enough. line to come away yeah. with the... Nobody, I think, is going to put this game away from the charity strike. And you got to keep driving to the basket. Timeout taken by Carey with a minute 54 remaining in the fourth quarter. And on the Philly Truck and RV scoreboard, it's Liberty Bent leading Carey 36-34. Back with more after this. Again, tonight's scoreboard is presented by Finley Truck and RV, your complete automotive experience at competitive prices. And on the scoreboard as we head towards the tail end of the fourth quarter, Liberty Benton leading carry 36-34 with a minute 54 remaining in the fourth quarter. Liberty Benton, again, led by 10 early. And it's been a back and forth battle since then. And every time Carey pushes, gets it tied up, gets within one possession, LB does just enough just to enough. extend that lead again. They get a basket underneath, or they get a foul, they send somebody to the foul line, they hit just enough free throws to stay ahead. But if I'm Carey, I'm going right to that, that basket. I want to try to get all those fouls and get to that foul line. And the guy to do it is number three out there for them, and Carter Smiley, who's, you know, Having a great game out there. He's got 12 points, but he really is a guy that can get to the line. Five for five at the free throw line. Nearly a turnover for Carries that slipped through the hands of Carter Smiley. Lincoln Garlock nearly had that in his hands, but Carey will hang on. Smiley gets it back. Works it to Yater. Yater handoff to Braden Young. Guarded by Elkert. Kick out in the corner. Nick Putnam for three. It's off the mark. Big rebound, Conaway. Conway's come up with some huge rebounds for Liberty Benton and limiting how many looks Carey has had here down the stretch. And he's made him emphatic, too. He's going to let him know, uh, this is my rebound. That's going to be a foul against Carey as Liberty Benton going to force the Blue Devils to use fouls now. Going to the line. And it's going to be Cam Garlock 
He's a 67% free throw shooter on the season. Carter Smiley guilty on the foul. First opportunity for Garlock is up. Battles in and out, no good. If you're LB, you want to get one here. You don't want a late three to put Carey up for the first time. That one is off the mark. Yater the rebound. One possession game with a minute seven remaining in the fourth quarter. Young got a spot up. That one short, but took an extra bounce. Ooh. Liberty Benton had real good position to get the, the rebound, but the ball bounced off the rim an extra time, got everybody out of Kilder, and as a result, the Eagles commit the foul trying to get back to the ball. Cam Garlock picks up his second foul, going to the line to shoot the one of one now. Will be Nick Putnam. The first free throw is good for the... He hasn't shot a lot. We talked Yo. about it at the beginning, just... 20% from the free throw line coming into this game, but only one of five. This, this will be his fourth look all of this game. And rims in and out, no good. Long rebound. Can Garlock run over? And Garlock will walk down the length of the floor to shoot two free throws as the Eagles are in the double bonus. Leading by one, 36-35. It's like a war of attrition right now. Man, it is, isn't it? It's almost like neither team wants it. <laughs> not, not the other way around, you know. Nobody's been able to really slam the door shut. But Garlock can do some damage from the free throw line, except when he hits the front of the rim on the first attempt. Now trying to make it at least a two-point game with 58.6 left. And he's able to do so. Splits the two free throws. Liberty Benton's lead stands at two with 54 seconds remaining. Young kick out into the corner. Putnam will give it up to uh, Bryce Young. Bryce picked up his dribble. And timeout going to be taken by Coach Jamie Young. We'll keep it right here with 45.8 remaining in the fourth quarter. Liberty Benton leading 37 to 35 on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Again, a game that Liberty Benton looked like they had in hand in the early goings. But Carey will not go away. Every time Liberty Benton looked like they could pull away, the Blue Devils come rallying back. And now they have the Eagles in a precarious spot, even though the Eagles are up by two. It's Carey with the ball. We know they're a three-point shooting team. And to the Eagles' credit, they've done a good job defending the perimeter. They're going to have to do it for a few more seconds. Yes, they absolutely have to. And, you know, the worst thing case scenario for him too is if Kerry can drive to the basket, if Smiley can get to the basket, get a basket and a foul, and because he's sitting, right now he's sit five for five with the free throw line here in the second half. You know, if he can, he's the guy that you want to trigger into the ball to. You know, he's a 40% three point shooter, but he's also an excellent free throw shooter. Behind the back dribble, Young will give it away, get it right back from Yader. Braden Young into the paint, shot up. Elker got a piece of it. Once again, it's Conaway with the rebound. Conaway gets the outlet. They weren't able to foul him. That's who they would have wanted to put at the free throw line. Over to Elker, and now Doolittle will be fouled with 22.4. He can make it a two possession ball game. How about the freshman coming up big there with the block, and Conaway comes up with yet another clutch rebound. Wow. You know, Elker's played just a great game tonight, really. Come in, you know, you know, in relief and, and just put his heart and soul into this game. And he's played this game a lot with three fouls, yes, too. Yes, he has. Like we said, there's been quite a few freshmen and sophomores playing varsity time for LB this year, but meaningful time is a different story. And we've seen South El Seth Elker really play some meaningful minutes and just came up huge there. That was the fifth foul on Nick Putnam. Third player to foul out for the Blue Devils. Now at the line. Doolittle's first free throw is off the mark, no good. Liberty Benton desperately wants this one. Doolittle, second free throw on the mark. And it's a three-point game. 
Quick timeout taken by Liberty Benton. And that was huge. Yes, it was. Let's keep it right here with 21.6 remaining in the fourth quarter. Liberty Benton leading by a score of 38 to 35 on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. So now here's your strategy. Down to under 30 seconds remaining, Dar. You've been a hot shooting three-point team all season. Do you roll the dice with something quick? Or do you try and get inside, maybe draw the M1? Well, I'm, I'm surprised they really, you know, to be honest, haven't gone to Smiley to let him try to go to the basket. I mean, he's the guy that's been running it all night long, and, you know, they've been, other, everybody else has been taking shots, and he really hadn't had the opportunity. Even if he can't get to the basket, he's their best three-point shooter out there. They've got to get the ball to that young man there, number three. You would definitely expect it to wind up in his hands here on this possession. He'll inbound it. Liberty Benton. Gonna put a little bit of pressure. Make them burn a little clock, bringing it up the time. Young takes it to the lane left side. That one found its way through. Full court pressure, and Liberty Benton will take the timeout. Carey cannot stop the clock. They are out of timeouts. Liberty Benton, that was the, uh, they will have two remaining after this. It's 38, 37, 8.7 remaining. Hit quarter number four. It's a full timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. Back after this on WOSN. Welcome back to Miller City High School, where we are going down to the wire in this sectional final at Boys Division Three High School. Hoops Liberty Benton tried to hold off Carey, leading by a score of 38-37 with eight and seven tenths of a second remaining in the contest. It will be Liberty Benton ball. They'll have the baseline. And you've got to imagine a foul coming quickly from the Blue Devils. Their strategy, they would probably try and force it towards Case and Doolittle, or excuse me, towards Conaway, who's had some, some struggles from the charity strike, but honestly, everybody's had tr struggles yes, from the charity strike tonight. Yes, they have for sure. It just Jake. shows how big that free throw by Doolittle do was. Jake Gherkin is in, and the reason he's in is a good free throw shooter. They get the inbounds pass to Lincoln Garlock, who will be fouled. Take the long walk down the floor for the 67% free throw shooter. Just seven tenths of a second coming off the clock there, so eight seconds remain. So that Lincoln Garlock's only shot 12 free throws this season, so he hasn't been in the foul line that often. Some big ones coming up for him right now. The first free throw off the back of the rim, no good. At the very least, you want to get this one, make it a two-point game. Second opportunity. Garlock in and out, no good. It's a one-point game. Rebound, Carey. Carey cannot stop the clock. Three seconds left. Fake the three. Smiley for three at the buzzer. That is off the top of the backboard. No good. And Liberty wow. survives and advances in Miller City. Final score. 38 to 37 on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. With the win, Liberty Benton will move to 21 and three on the season. Carey will end their campaign at 19 and four. We'll take a timeout in the post game after this on WOSM. A wild finish here in Miller City. Liberty Benton goes wire to wire in this game. They never trail, but it was close. It sure this was. 38-37 ends up being our final. We thought free throws would be the story, and they did missed free throws were the story of this game. It's why Carey stuck around, but also it might be why Carey couldn't get ahead on the scoreboard. Well, it, and it really hurt him. When you miss your front end of your one-on-ones the way they did that first half, they were, you know, in the first half, you know, they were... 8 for 11 in the second half, you know, but 11 for 19 overall. They were just 3 for 8 in that first half of the free throw line, which they left a lot of points out there. Liberty Benton just hit just enough. I mean, they were 10 for 22 in the second half at the free throw line, 14 for 28, you know, overall in the game. But, you know, I, I was a little surprised that Kerry Dears didn't try to get to the basket a little bit more there towards the end, you know. Uh, but, you know, a tough game. Yeah. I mean, it, you know. And, and like I said, no way you could really get in a flow of this game. I mean, no, nothing could really, you know, neither team could really grab the, the momentum 
to really pull away. Liberty Benton started out that way, but then it fizzled out really quickly. You know, but I'll tell you, you look down this carry lineup, and they don't have a lot of seniors on this lineup. So there's, there's a team that's going to be back next year for sure. And, you know, Liberty Benton's going to have to figure out some things before they get into the next game, that's for sure. They will be challenged by Spencerville, definitely. We saw Spencerville take out Columbus Grove earlier tonight. I think credit where credit's due for Liberty Benton, Part of the reason I don't believe that Kerry can attack the lane is you look at the way that Carson Conaway and also Seth Elkert were able to patrol the lane tonight. They made it very hard, and then the Garlocks were creating turnovers around the perimeter. So a tough defense to attack, and Kerry just hung around, hung around, hung around, but just couldn't find that last way to attack a bucket in any, any way that really felt threatening. Well, absolutely. But, and the big thing, too, for, for that is when Conaway – and Doolittle were sitting on the bench. Kerry couldn't take advantage of that. You know, Elkert came in and did an outstanding job underneath the boards, you know, at the, on defense and, and did everything he hit, could there and stuff. So give that guy, that young man, a lot of credit. You know, it, it just was a game where Kerry just couldn't get over the hump. They had the opportunities. They just couldn't get past that point. When you've got the top two players you know, and at one point, top three players on the, on this Liberty Benton team sitting on the bench, and you can't push past that, you know, yeah, that's, that's tough. <laughs> Most definitely, and all adds up to a Liberty Benton victory. Final score, 38-37 on the Finley Truck and RV scoreboard. Uh, of course, it will now be Liberty Benton taking on Spencerville. That will be in the district semis at Lima Senior High School. Should be a good contest, and again, are two teams that may want to get out and run against each other. I, I think they watch. will. I think I think they'll both try to get it up and down the court a little bit. You know, uh, they better. They're going to have to shoot better than they both of them did tonight. That's for sure. Particularly from the three-point range. You know, Liberty Bend didn't shoot anything hardly from the three-point range. You know, but uh, you know, so I, I, it could be a real good game. A real good defensive game for sure. Most definitely. Both teams like to steal the ball a lot. Like to pressure. Like to trap. The, all those things that they like to do. So, yeah, it, it could be another game down in the low 30s, you know, low 40s. Well, that'll do it for our broadcast. Again, the final score here in Miller City, LB over Cary, 38-37. For Darn Evergo, I'm Doug Jenkins. Thanks for watching on WOSM.